When you're throwing a slab, it's different than a slab roller because the slab roller makes everything perfectly even. And that's great for some sizes of pots that you can't really throw on a, on a wheel. But for a round plate or an oval plate, I like to use the wheel to make my slabs because you can make it thick in the center and thinner out on the edge just like any thrown pot would be. So when I'm doing slab work, I use a clay body that has a little bit of fine grog in it because I find the slabs perform better that way. I have less warping and cracking. But a thrown slab is generally stronger than one made on a slab roller. It has more compression to it. So once I get a piece centered that I'm gonna make flat, either making a plate or like this slab, I really cross my thumbs over and flatten it out. And it makes this nice little divot in the middle of the clay. So then I'll use my fist and my pinky knuckle to open this slab up. And I just lean back. It's like making one giant pot bottom. So you really have to make sure to go over it several times. I'll do a thrown foot for the plate. I need to think about how big it's gonna be. When this earthenware fires in the kiln, it tends to move a lot like porcelain. So if I put the, the foot in too far, the rim will drop. If I put the foot out too far, the center will drop. So I've got this slab thrown. And now I'm going to use calipers to decide how big the foot is going to be and measure it. So I think the foot needs to sit about two inches in from the edge of the plate. And I throw the foot on the wheel at the same time I throw the slab so that they'll dry at the same rate. To throw the foot, I'm going to open this all the way down to the bat and start to pull out a ring of clay. Whenever you do that, it's difficult to keep the clay stuck to the bat. The farther out I pull this ring, the thinner the ring gets, the uh, more likely it is to let go of the bat. And I've just started with probably a pound of clay here, even though I will end up cutting most of that away. So my thumb drags on the outside of this ring of clay. And that's going to help dry off the bat. It's as if you're, you're pulling this clay out, you're moving it off one part of the bat onto another part, and it needs to reattach itself. If I go too quickly, I'll just overshoot that layer of water on the outside, and the whole ring will come completely detached. Got a little bit farther to go. And I'm throwing this foot ring upside down. So the part that's against the bat will be the part that attaches to the plate. So I'm actually going to do a pull with the goal of getting rid of about half of this. I want to keep the thickness of the foot equal with the thickness of the plate so they dry evenly and it'll prevent cracking. And I could leave the foot very tall. It depends on the plate design and what you're looking for. But I'm going to cut off that much of it. And then I'll rework this, setting it like a rim on the top of a pot, but really it's the bottom of the foot. It's the part that'll touch the table. And then just like when you're putting an undercut on your plate so that the wire goes through correctly, I'm gonna put an undercut on both sides of this foot so the wire doesn't get lost when it's cutting through from the inside. Mm -hmm.